In this unit, we're going to cover Ohio consumer protection laws, documentary service fees, advertising regulations, and how to export motor vehicles. Let's go ahead and get started with Ohio's consumer protection laws. As stated a little earlier in the course, the Ohio Attorney General's Office is not only the leading law enforcement division in the state, they have a very important role of protecting consumers from fraudulent business practices, and they have several consumer protection laws. You know, the cornerstone of Ohio consumer law is what's called the Consumer Sales Practices Act, which protects individual consumers from unfair, deceptive, and unconscionable sales practices in connection with consumer transactions. This act does include motor vehicle transactions conducted by licensed motor vehicle dealers. If you would like to download the entire Consumer Sales Practices Act manual, you can download it by visiting ohiodealer.com, scroll down to the Ohio Dealer License Forms link, and you can take a look at that manual. But I do want to go over some of the components of the Consumer Protection Act here. And this is an overview of the consumer protection laws that directly affect the operation of every Ohio dealership. Please note that some additional laws may apply as well. First, let's talk about the Credit Card Reporting Act. This prohibits sellers from giving out consumers social security numbers, credit card account numbers, credit card expiration dates, and other personal financial information. The Credit Card Truncation Act prohibits sellers from printing credit card expiration dates of more than five digits on a consumer's credit card receipt. The Motor Vehicle Collision Repair Operators Act requires registration and insurance for people who repair vehicles that have been damaged in collisions. The Odometer Rollback and Disclosure Act makes it illegal to alter or conceal the mileage reading of a vehicle, and it establishes a $1,000 penalty for tampering with an odometer. It also requires written notice of any odometer repair. The Security Breach Notification Act requires sellers to notify consumers if a security breach puts their personal information at risk for identity theft or other fraud. The Certificate of Motor Vehicle Title Act. This gives consumers the unconditional right to cancel their vehicle purchase if a dealer does not deliver the title within 40 days of the purchase. And this is the law that also created that title defect rescission fund that allows us to sell motor vehicles immediately upon possession, even before we have possession of the titles. The Consumer Sales Practices Act. This protects consumers from deceptive advertising and other types of fraud. It prohibits sellers from taking advantage of a consumer's illiteracy or mental or physical disability or the inability to understand the terms of a sale or a contract. It makes it illegal for sellers such as dealers to misrepresent the nature of their products, the price of their goods, or the terms of a transaction. The Lemon Law. This requires manufacturers to notify buyers of their right to compensation if a vehicle is defective. So this requires auto manufacturers to repair or replace lemon vehicles within a reasonable period of time. And normally that's only going to apply to manufacturers. The Telemarketing Act. This allows the Ohio Attorney General to enforce federal telemarketing laws. So if you want to read all those, you can certainly go to the ohiodealer.com website, scroll down to the dealer forms page, and you can easily read the entire Protection Act. Next, we're going to go over document fees, or what the state refers to as a document service fee. Now, I'm sure that you're aware that you will normally be making the majority of a profit on a vehicle by the markup. For example, when you purchase a vehicle at a dealer auction, you're going to mark the price of the vehicle up and sell it on your lot. So you will be making a profit on the markup, but you can also incur additional profits on document service fees. You're probably aware by now that you are going to have a lot of documents to complete on every motor vehicle that you sell. Well, the Ohio Revised Code 4517.261 permits a motor vehicle dealer to charge a documentary service fee for a retail or wholesale or lease of a motor vehicle. So the state does allow you to charge a customer a fee for completing all the paperwork on a motor vehicle transaction. It's called a documentary service fee. But before you charge any document fees, you need to be aware of the strict guidelines you must follow before charging a document fee. First of all, the documentary service fee must be specified in writing. Now, I want you to be aware an itemization of all individual services is not, is not going to be required, but the documentary service fee must be in writing. 
So you can either charge a maximum fee set by the Bureau of Motor Vehicles that is tied directly to the consumer price index or 10% of the vehicle price, whichever is less. And I wanna repeat that very important information. You can either charge a maximum fee that's set by the Bureau of Motor Vehicles that is tied directly to the consumer price index or 10% of the vehicle price, whichever is lower. And you will include that documentary fee in the total taxable amount of the vehicle, like I showed you a little while ago when we were using the Ohio Tax Finder. Now let's go ahead and talk about the maximum documentary fee that is set by the BMV. The maximum is fee is set by the BMV every year, and it can change every year, and it's directly related to the consumer price index. So the maximum fee will be adjusted annually on the last day of September, and it will be published on the Ohio Bureau of Motor Vehicles website. Now I want to repeat that very important information as well. The maximum fee changes every year on the last day of September. Now this chart on this screen will easily explain the maximum documentary fee that you can charge when it's based on the selling price of the vehicle. So let's use a really simple example here. And let's say the BMV has set a $250 fee as the maximum fee that's set by the BMV for that year that's tied directly into the consumer price index. Now that is not the maximum fee set by the BMV. I'm just going to use that amount as a simple example. So if the maximum amount is $250 for that year, let's go ahead and do a scenario. So here you see, if you sell a vehicle for $10,000, then you could charge the maximum document fee set at that year for $250. Remember that $250 maximum is just being used as a sample in this training scenario. Next, you see if you sell a vehicle for $5,000, you can still charge the maximum documentary fee of $250. When you sell a vehicle for $2,500, you can still charge the maximum fee of $250. However, whenever the selling price of the vehicle would drop below $2,500 in this scenario, then 10% of the vehicle price becomes the lower of the two. So if you sell a vehicle for $2,499, the maximum document fee would be 10% of the vehicle price, which would be $249. If you sell a vehicle for $1,000, the maximum documentary fee you could charge would be $100. If you sold a vehicle for $500, the maximum documentary fee would be $50. So see how that works? But before you do decide whether or not you're gonna charge a document fee, you're either gonna be a, charge, a document fee charging dealer that charges the document fee on every transaction, or you'll be a non-document fee dealer that never charges document fees. And if you are a document fee charging dealer, you may never waive the document fee. So let's say, for example, you're a document fee charging dealer and you charge one customer a document fee, then you charge the next customer a document fee, and then the third customer says they're not going to pay the document fee and you waive the fee. Well, if you think about that scenario, you've charged the previous customers additional fees that were not charged to later customers, which would give the previous customers legal recourse against you. So what happens if you have a customer in your office you know, pounding his fist on a table stating he's not going to pay any document fee. Well, he is going to pay a document fee. You can never waive the fee. However, you could lower the price of the vehicle to an amount that would equal the elimination of the document fee. But once again, if you are a document service fee charging dealer, you may never waive the document fee. So please remember, the maximum amount changes on the last day of September every year. And you can visit the BMV website to find the maximum fee that can be charged for that year. Or you can call the dealer licensing section in Columbus at 614-752-7636 to find out the maximum fee that can be charged for that year. You may never charge more than the maximum fee that's set by the BMV for that year. Please never charge more than the maximum fee that is allowed. Next, I wanna cover advertising regulations. Advertising can be a really important component in the operation of your dealership. And there is a reason that every other ad on the radio and TV is a dealer ad because advertising in this industry can be very, very effective. The following advertisement regulations apply whether you are advertising in print, radio, television, display, and all forms of internet advertising, including your own dealership website. The Attorney General's office has developed a list of what they deem deceptive advertising. If you're ever accused of deceptive advertising, that could lead to an investigation from the Attorney General's office. 
So that's something we certainly want to avoid. And I'm gonna go right down the list here and cover deceptive advertising practices. The use of inaccurate photographs when advertising a specific automobile is deceptive. So you can't run an ad in your local newspaper for a beautiful Cadillac Escalade that shows a price of $5,000 and the vehicle on the lot is really a dented up 1996 Chevy Tahoe. So you can never run inaccurate photographs. The use of any unexplained abbreviations that are not readily understood by the general public, you know, such as us in the industry realize that WAC stands for with approved credit, but a lot of persons in the general public would not understand that abbreviation. So you can't use abbreviations that are not readily understood by the general public. You can't use the terms such as specially selected, valued customer, or similar terms uh, if the customer has not been specifically targeted with that advertising, let's say for example with a direct mail piece. It's deceptive to use one or more asterisks which disclaimers confuse or contradict the message of the original advertisement. Falsely implying that a dealer can sell vehicles at a lower price than other dealers as a result of their size, inventory, or sales volume is actually unfair and deceptive. Using factory outlet, factory authorized sale, special purpose, or other similar terms to imply that the dealer has a special relationship with the manufacturer, which is greater than other dealers, is unfair and deceptive. The use of liquidation sale, closeout sale, or other similar terms used to create the impression that the business is going to cease to exist. So you never want to run a going out of business sale unless you are in fact going out of business. And I do hope that's a sale that you never have to run. Using repossession sale, seize vehicles or similar terms to induce a belief that the vehicles were obtained through repossession or seizure and sold at lower prices is unfair and deceptive unless it is actually true. It's deceptive for a dealer to offer a vehicle at a specific price and fail to make that vehicle available for sale. If an advertised vehicle is not in stock, your ad must specify that the vehicle is not in stock and it must be ordered. An advertisement that fails to disclose the duration of a limited time offer is also against the law. So you can't run a big radio ad telling everyone to come in for free hot dogs. And then when someone comes in wanting a free hot dog, you tell them that they've got to take a test drive. That would be deceptive. The use of lowest prices, guaranteed lowest prices, prices lower than anyone else's or similar terms is unfair and deceptive unless sub such uh, claims can be substantiated, which is going to be very, very difficult to do. Comparing the offering price to the dealer's cost or the actual cost or cost or similar terms is deceptive due to the difficulty in determining the dealer's actual net cost. It's deceptive to use the word rust proofing in any ad, so you may no longer advertise rust proofing. I also want to read this very important line out of your manuals. It says right there, if a current or previous model year vehicle is used, you must disclose the words used, previously owned, or pre-owned. I want to repeat that very, very important information. If a current or previous model year vehicle is used, you must disclose the words used, previously owned, or pre-owned. Since you are going to be a used dealer selling only used motor vehicles, you must have the words used, previously owned, or pre-owned in every ad. So please do be aware of that. I also want you to be aware that all motor vehicle invoice advertisements in Ohio must clearly and conspicuously disclose the following, that the factory invoice may not reflect the dealer's actual cost. How many times have you heard a dealer that has an ad that says something like, you know, we're selling all of our vehicles for a penny over invoice? Well, I guarantee a dealer is never going to be selling a vehicle for a penny profit, but dealers are actually allowed to create invoices as long as they state that the factory invoice may not reflect the dealer's actual cost. And this would normally apply to franchisers that are selling new motor vehicles. Let's talk about bait advertising, which is sometimes referred to as bait and switch advertising. Bait and switch advertising is never allowed. And I want to give you an example and help you to help, help you comply. Let's say, for example, you advertise a 2024 Corvette in your local paper, and the first person that comes in loves it, they buy it, and now the 2024 Corvette's gone. Next, you have another customer that comes in asking to see that 2024 Corvette they saw on the paper. So you're going to want to say something like, I'm sorry we sold that Corvette you were interested in, and I'm going to call you when we get another one just like it. And that's all you want to say. You never, ever want to say something like, 
you know, well, I'm sorry we sold that Corvette you saw on the paper, but you should come on over here and take a look at this Nissan 350Z we just got in the other day. And what you've done in that scenario is you baited the customer in with an ad, and then you switched the customer to something that was not in the ad, and that is a violation of state and federal law. You never, ever want to bait and switch. Now, if the customer says something like, oh, okay, well, you sold the Corvette. Is there something else you can show me? Then you can show the customer something else because the customer initiated the switch. So remember, the customer can initiate the switch to look at something that was not in the ad, but the dealer may never initiate the switch to a vehicle that was not in the ad. This would be a violation of state and federal law. And finally, dealers may not attach any tag or placard bearing the dealer's name when they drill the placard into any part of the vehicle unless the purchaser gives the dealer permission in writing. So years ago, we had dealers that would create a metal placard with their dealership name and actually drill it into the trunk for permanent advertising Well, that's no longer allowed. You know, if you want to use adhesive to place your dealership name on the back of the vehicle, that would be allowed, but you can't drill into the vehicle and mount it unless the customer gives you written permission in advance. Next, I want to cover exports. You know, I know that you're probably going to be opening a dealership on that corner of a busy intersection or along the highway and, and you wait for customers to drive by and visit your lot and hopefully purchase a vehicle from you. And that corner lot or that lot on that highway, it truly is the foundation of our industry. However, that being said, the world is your market. And there's always some area on the planet that has some type of motor vehicle shortage and you can legally export your vehicles to other countries to meet this demand. But I want you to be aware, if you ever export a vehicle to another country, the state requires you submit this form right here. This is Ohio Vehicle Export Application. And this, so in this scenario, you're going to mail the original title to Columbus so they can deactivate the title. Then you'll, they will send you a certified copy that you will send to the customer that lives in the other country. So once again, the original title will be mailed to Columbus. It's gonna, they're gonna deactivate that original title. They're gonna send you a certified copy that you're gonna send to the customer that lives in the other country. I want you to be aware that failure to provide this document when you are exporting a vehicle can lead to a $2,500 fine or more. So you wanna make sure you're in compliance with this requirement when you're exporting vehicles to other countries. So make sure and send the original title to Columbus. They'll deactivate the original title. They'll send you a certified copy and you must include this Ohio vehicle export application. And I hope you're finding this information very helpful. I want to make sure that you are very aware. You can review all of this content at ohiodealer.com. At any time, just go click on the dealer course videos and you can cover unit seven. And in unit seven, we covered Ohio's consumer protection laws, the documentary fees that can be charged for preparation of documents, strict advertising guidelines. And then also I wanted to show you how to export motor vehicles. Let's go ahead and move on to the next unit.